Welcome back. So this lesson, I want to focus on the customer services, find customer by ID, including orders, because I want to show you guys some pretty valid information right here, why it's dangerous to put too much um, database specific information inside our services. Right now, notice this is actually a join that we are trying to reference in a service and maybe that belongs in database. Let me try to explain why it might belong in a database in our setup right here. So let's just try and run this code and have a look at what we kind of get from it down here in the console. What kind of SQL queries do we actually call? What I want to do is just get customer one right here and I'll do a send. And there we get a customer, it looks perfect. We get a customer with two orders. Now I want to tell you guys, I seeded the database with a bit more information. Let me just show you in the DB initializer here. I added an extra, the customers, they're now two customers like before, but they have more orders. So the first customer has two orders and the second customer have a single order. So I just added that to, to prove my point right here. So let's just look at this. You get the first customer, he has the two orders. That's what I expected. And let's just fire for the second customer and he has a single order right there. So that's exactly what I expected. Let me just click the console here again and let me try and do this guy again because here's something I didn't expect and this is crucial information. So jumping back to my code, notice what happens. The SQL queries that I call to get a single customer, the first one makes sense because if we look at our service right here, let's look at the first part of the SQL, the first query that is being sent. We're sending a read by ID, that's what we want to do, right? We want to read the customer by ID. So let's just jump into our customer repository and see how we do that, right? There we go. We say get customers and then find the first customer that has this ID. And how does that translate into SQL? Let's have a look. Select, and this is pretty much saying select all, right? Select all the different fields from the customers as C, because then we can reuse the customer, the C term right here and here and here. And then we say where the ID is equal to the ID that we're passing in from the outside. In our case, this ID, right? Perfect. And then we should only get one customer. And because we only want one, the first or default, that pretty much means that we're putting in a limit of one inside the SQL query. That's how the query works. That's how the context takes this information and converts it into an SQL query. But there's more. Because we also ask, as the second step inside our service right here, we ask it to go through all the orders and find all the customers that match the ID that we want. So let's just have a look at that code. There's a second select query right here, and that's actually that guy we are watching right there. Now here's the problem. It says select all from orders. That's pretty much what you see right here. And it says from orders SO. But notice there's no where clause. So it's getting back all the orders. What? That's not what I wanted. I only want you to return the orders that has the specific customer ID. What are you doing, man? Why are you not being helpful? Well, the problem is that we moved repository specific logic into our service. That's a problem. So we have to get rid of that again. We have to move it down one layer and we'll do that in the next lesson. What I actually expected to see right here was actually a where clause that says, I only want customers that has this specific ID. Now we can do it very easily when we start making this type of information is um, database specific information when we start putting that down into the repositories and we'll start doing that to make it a lot better. Now this is, the database is so small right now, you wouldn't even notice this and you didn't. Probably when you run this, it's, it looks fine. But when you start analyzing your SQL, you'll start seeing some problems here because it would actually end up if you had a gazillion orders, it would get all those orders and then in the code, in memory, it would start filtering the orders because this returns an inumerable, but the inumerable is not a queryable inumerable. It's actually um, an in-memory inumerable, pretty much meaning that right here of this line right here, when we execute this, we would actually get all the, all the orders back before we called the where clause, and that would be a, a huge problem for us. Now, we'll fix it in the next lesson, but I just want you guys to understand that there's something wrong right here in our query, so we need to go and fix it. That's it for this lesson. See you next time.